The elevators got torn down too, didn't it? Yes. Yeah, that, that was in the, in the Catholic Church. Something like that. I, I, I got a new priest up here in the, in the church, and I was telling him that I don't know whether he wanted to listen to it, I told him anyway. <laughs> when I was a kid, uh, I remember Reverend Taylor came in to stay with us. He lived out on the farm out here. Dwayne, Dwayne's Dwayne still around, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. yeah, okay. Anyway, uh, he came in and stayed with us. And uh, uh, Reverend said, What time is it? I said, Just a minute. And I went to the bathroom window and came back and I said, It's 9 15. What the heck, did you go to the bathroom to look at the, what time it was? Well, we only had one clock in our house, and that was in the kitchen, and, and, and anyway. But for years and years and years, our family looked out the bathroom window at the church clock over there, <laughs> and we could tell what time it was. And the, the worst thing about that was, there was no sense of lying to my parents when I came in at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> to say, Dad said, what time is it? With no sense of me telling me, it's only 11. That clock made a liar out of me, right? It was wrong eight times and then, you know, wrong. <laughs> anyway, any other, anybody else? Come on. Be was, was there ever a lake southeast of Melbourne here? Uh, well, early on, I don't ever remember it, maybe Jerry does, but I, don't, but I remember uh, my mother talking about the mill had, had a, uh, had a backed up, a mill pond down there, and I remember her talking about going down as a uh, young girl, and they ice skated down on that mill pond down there. I have pictures of that. Yeah. How big was it, Jerry? Well, it was... Uh, it, Come on up, Jerry. Uh, is, is, is it as big as the one that Butch Park wants to build? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, he, he, he's kind of a historian. He's always bugging me about something. Yeah, uh, about Butch Parks, he was out to my museum one day, and, and I got a map there that basically shows the first landowners in Dixon County. I have so many people that stop just to see that because maybe their grandma or grandpa lived at our homestead and they like to see where it is. But on that map, it does show the mill pond that was southeast of Melbourne. And uh, it was fairly good size because uh, east of Melbourne, where you go down the old dump hill, where the Pauly, Paul family lived, see, they used to have uh, docks and they even had a little boat works and deliver, uh, uh, boat livery there. And uh, like Audrey said, that uh, it was a great uh, place to uh, uh, ice skate in the wintertime. But what was really good about it was it soaked the fishing. And uh, uh, we have, I have pictures of, of the lake that set up for the pond. And uh, uh, I've always said one day, well, when Butch Parks was out, we was looking at that. And I said, you know, really, uh, it wouldn't take much to just build the dam there and back the water up. It'd be just like it was at one time. You just keep a <laughs> fishing and hunting. But you got to be careful who you tell that to. <laughs> you know, but really, uh, it would be neat. I, I think if they would bring it back, it would really be quite an uh, asset to the town of Melbourne because basically all the ground there is just pasture. Uh, there might be two homes that might be affected. But uh, uh, another thing I was going to say too, now you, in front of our old city hall, everyone knows that uh, the millstone that is there. Actually, a lot of people think that that come from the old town mill, and that's not where it came from. It come from, see, Melbourne actually had the two mills. The, the lower <coughs> mill was down by Clem Dust, and that's where that mill stone came from. Because uh, my father, uh, when Clem Dust owned the ground down there, asked 
clam if he could go down and look for that millstone. And Clem says, well, I don't think Art would ever find it. And he says, well, I think I can because I think I know about where they buried it. And Clem told me that Dad went down there. He spent many uh, evenings digging just by hand. And that thing was down like six days put under the, the dirt. And he finally found it. Well, then he brought it up to Melbourne. And it almost disappeared again. And I think uh, there was some uh, people, Roscoe Ewan, I think, and uh, uh, I don't know exactly who all uh, got involved in it, but rescued it, it rescued it, because it almost got thrown away again, and then put it together, which was real good. Uh, I do know the approximate area where the Melbourne Old Millstone is, but Claude Norley took me down there one day and told me about where it was. But I tell you, uh, it, it wouldn't be feasible to ever try to find it because it's under the grade there. Right there. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Jerry, is there another dam up in East Milford yet? Pardon? I think there's a dam out in East uh, Milford. Well, it's yeah. on, the, on the outlet out there. Yeah, yeah. Yes. the lower door. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and that was always kind of interesting too, the lower gar uh, dam. Uh, they used to be the game warden house that would be on the north side of it. It was a garden house. Yeah, and I always think of, uh, Matt Richter told me one time, he says, your dad and Fred uh, uh, Rang and them would go down there when the fish would be up against it, and they would uh, illegally <laughs> get the fish up against the dam, and old uh, Matt Richter told me that that uh, he always carried a, a bar of life boy soap <laughs> with him. So if the game warden never came by, well, if he would say, well, I want to smell you guys' hands, well, it always smelled like life boy. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the, as a kid uh, where that dam is, uh, up on the uh, north side of it, there was a, a, a building there, which was, uh, my understanding was, it was kind of a guardhouse because they had a lot of problems with uh, putting the dams in and then uh, people uh, in the other lakes uh, didn't really want to have that uh, dam, they'd come and tear it down. And then they'd put it back up again, so and that was that really why the why it was ever put in the first place. I don't know, but uh, anybody else? Come on then. How many movie theaters did you have? Uh, the only only movie theater that I know of was the one that is still here. That uh, was a strand when I was a kid. And uh, <clears throat> uh, I don't know when it was, but early on, uh, they used to have the high school graduation exercise in that Strand Theater, uh, and if you've ever been in there to look at the, the classes, must not been very big, you know, but uh, they use that. But uh, I remember going there with my parents, and uh, Dad would always take a a little uh, about a half pint, I guess, a, a pint bottle of water because they didn't have any drinking fountain in there, nor did they have any restrooms in there originally. And uh, <laughs> think about it. think about that one. Right? <laughs> Aubrey, was there a drive-in theater? Uh, yes, there was a, a drive-in theater uh, right up at the uh, corner there, uh, Kitty Kitty Corner from uh, uh, Perkins up in there. It's it's all mobile homes now up there. And so on. that that by the way is where the uh, drive-in worship service started for this church which was over, over 50 years ago. And uh, I can remember going up there, I remember going to the drive-in theater, taking the kids, you know. And I never did, but some of them, they'd, they'd uh, put the kids in the trunk so they wouldn't have to pay for them. <laughs> <laughs> that was a seven? What? That, that was a seven outdoor theater. Yeah. 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 
Oh, you want to say that again and repeat that? He said that was the seventh outdoor theater built in the United States. There is one being built up about three miles west of Superior. Yeah, the theater. right there by the intersection, isn't it? That goes north of 71 and, uh, yeah. Uh, well, that used to be one, and it also was one up in Spirit Lake as well. Yeah. Right next to the, right west of the cemetery. Yeah, Walmart yesterday, right? Yeah, it used to yeah. be there. I always remember my grandfather. I, I yeah. thought maybe he'd kind of enjoy that one up there because he went to every change of movies that there was. And they had, see what they had. I remember one of them that uh, we had uh, played in the band. And we always had band practice on Tuesday night. And the uh, director, whether it was uh, Mullins or Haig or anybody else, didn't dare go after about uh, nine o'clock, because that's when the 11 cent movie started. <laughs> it must have been, I think, uh, C and B movies, but uh, all the band people just dropped their horns and ran up there and uh, went to the 11 cent movies. Uh, otherwise, they were what, how much? Quarter? 50 cents, something like that. When you got to be 12 years old, the price went up. It did. No. I know why. From I turned to 12, I've been getting in for a dime or 11 cents, like you say, and I couldn't believe why they knew, they knew me right away. I had to be a part <laughs> and then my birthday was over with. It's hard to hide anything in Milford, wasn't it? <laughs> During the war time, I know they had the, uh, you know, the reels about the news reels about the war. Oh, yeah. And then they had the cartoon, then they had the movie. Why don't, right. you, why don't you bring back the cartoon for the stupid? <laughs> well, then they used to have also, they had those cereals, <clears throat> like the, the Three Musketeers, you know, and then they, and they always leave you with that cliffhanging episode, uh, you know, and the, they had some uh, Tarzan and uh, Buck, Jones. Buck Jones, right, and so on like that. Ted yeah. Maynard. Ted Maynard. Right? Tom Mick. Tom. Well, they weren't on the cereals, were they? Oh, I think so. Oh, were they? So Captain right. Marvel. Captain Marvel. Okay. Yeah, they, once in a while the TV tries to do the same thing, but I think they lose you during the week or something like that. Yeah, I remember as a kid we'd uh, say like the Three Musketeers or something, and then we'd all talk about it. What, you know, what really uh, kind of try to guess what what was going to happen to those guys, and then we couldn't hardly wait to get to the next weekend to go to the movie so we could find out what happened to them. You know, popcorn was a nickel. I always remember a, a story about my, my grandfather, I wouldn't say it was tight, but anyway, he used to go up to the park. And uh, a lot of you probably did the same as my parents. After work, uh, in the summertime, we'd drive up and park underneath the roof garden up there and watch the people promenade back and forth. And uh, my grandmother and my granddad went up there one time, and my grandmother just kind of said to him, Gee, that popcorn sure smells good. And he looked over and said, well, he said, I'll just move the car over near the popcorn machine. <laughs> How many of you have ever seen the silent movies? How many have ever seen the silent movies? Well, let's see. Uh, well, I remember uh, let's see, uh, Jim Lucko used to play for the silent movies here in town. Yeah. You had to be able to read. <laughs> <laughs> and then how about the ones that sing with the bouncy ball? <laughs> Maybe a little, here's a little piece of graffiti for you. Lawrence Welk played up at the Arnold's Park uh, uh, Theater one summer right there when he was just a kid. Played, played the piano and, and, and his accordion for the silent movies up there. Live on ten. Get a little touch there. So we would get Tom Mix. Tom Mix. Tom yeah. Mix. Yeah. Anybody else? Does anybody remember Bill Blade as a sheriff, as a cop? Uh, oh yeah. yeah he he was was Say the name again. Bill Blade, and he had a big black, black police ball. Right. Yeah. How about Sam Morse? 
Sam Morris. Right. Here's the placement. Placement, right? Yeah. That's a big long place. Huh? <laughs> you drive through town too fast, you'll walk your across the hood of your car. Oh. Uh, slow down, you want to get through Milford. <laughs> <laughs> Chew tobacco, too, I believe. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. I remember my dad uh, had the job of uh, exterminating uh, Bill Glade's uh, dog. Ooh. And he took him down to the sand pit down there in the southwest of town and uh, shot him and uh, covered him up with sand. And uh, he uh, had another dog that he had to take down the next day. And he went down and here was that Bill Blake's dog sitting up on the sand. He <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, had to shoot thing twice. <laughs> <laughs> we, had, we had a dog named Bing. So I rode it with my dad in the truck and something like that. And for some reason or other, Bing always knew when Dad threw another dog in the back of the truck, Bing disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> he knew what was happening. So. And Stan Coleman was, had a St. Bernard, I think, didn't he? Who? Stan Coleman. That's, Anybody remember? He had a black, he had a big black, 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 big black, black dog. dog. Okay. They were real good for going up and down the alleys at night checking doors because there was no light in the alley. You know, dogs could go back in behind the store. If anybody's back in there, the dog found them. Well, if any of you ladies want to touch me, I was in the service with Clark Gable. <laughs> <laughs> he marched on my heels, or I marched on his, and when they marched through Miami Beach, these gals on the street bar, they said, hi, Clark. And I said, hi, and Gable was behind me. I said, Gable, they talking to you or me? Did he really have bad breath? I didn't get that close. And who was gone with the wind? Yes. Who was the star? 1939. She hated to kiss him because he had bad breath. I didn't have any interest in kissing him. Well, that was it. Is that what everybody used to have? Uh, my sin sin, is that, yeah. remember that? Yeah. Yeah. I remember we had a couple of, uh, had a band man, Milford, uh, and he always, he smoked, I think he always had, it smelled sin sin. Art Collins. Yeah. What are you going to play the piano on that guy? Anybody else? Come on, don't be bashful. I'm bashful. Five more minutes. I can't tell you much about the old history. My family and I moved up here in the mid-50s, but I do remember Dwight Ann Tisdall's flower and shop out here, the nursery, and White's hardware store, and of course, Whitrock service station where I could buy 25 cent gas, <laughs> yeah. push the lawnmower for 50 cents an hour for two weeks, take my date out, fill the car with gas, take her to a drive-in movie for another 50 cents, take her to a hamburger joint, malt, hamburger, fries, come home and count my change. <laughs> now I can't even start the car on it. <laughs> but uh, some of you may remember our uh, realtor, Bob Hansen, he ran a mobile station for a while. And I've always had a tendency to be a little on the honorary side. I dropped a tire off one day that blew out on a pickup with 140 bush loads on it. You can about imagine what that military tire looked like. I asked him to boot it up for me. <laughs> Came back from over, it was still laying there. I said, whoa, thought you going to fix it. He says, are you kidding? It cost you more in boots than that tire's worked. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I graduated uh, in 61, and like I said, I don't know a lot of the old history of Milford, but I do remember the corner drugstore. Mr. Murray and his son Jim ran it for many years. They had the best cherry Cokes. 
and some real nice looking waitresses behind that counter too. <laughs> but uh, these days, I have to be careful because my wife's listening. <laughs> but uh, speaking of Mr. Dust out here by the river, my father was quite a fisherman, and he took my wife and I, and we went down here, and you can imagine a city girl on the end of a 12-foot cane pole catching bullets. <laughs> I didn't have to take them off the hook. They came off, was landing in the pasture, and the hogs was eating them. <laughs> but, uh, like I say, I'm, I'm fairly, uh, wouldn't be considered a newcomer, but I just thought I'd mention some of those, and I knew Mr. Russell when he was here, and then there was Mr. J. Sykes and his daughter, but uh, I remember going to Arns Park. I had more fun visiting out of the car window than I did any of the attraction that was up there to catch up with friends that I'd met over the years and hadn't seen for one summer to the other. Well, you know, catch up on what's going on. And, and then, uh, of course, there was the Richter boys that we went to school with. And, in fact, I just saw Herman a few days ago when I gave him a ride to the store after he dumped his car off to get it fixed. But I guess that's about all I can think of right now. But Thank you very much. Anybody else here? As long as right now I'm up here, and when I got down in my basement, buggy, I don't know whether you do it or not, but I, I wrote four books, and I still have some of my last book available. <laughs> so if anybody would like to buy one, I'll be happy to autograph it and uh, take your $10 bill. <laughs> you take credit cards? <laughs> yeah, I'll, just keep, I'll just keep it. <laughs> anybody else? Thank you very much. And uh, thank you all for coming out. We, I counted, just for the record, 50 people here today. So thank you all so much for coming out. We still have uh, some more cookies and lemonade, I think. So uh, enjoy milling around and uh, maybe sharing some more stories. So thanks again for coming. Thank you.